I'm so upset. The Suicide Squad came in below industry projections. And I feel terrible. No, I'm just kidding. I don't. <laughs> but let's get into this. Suicide Squad came in below industry projections. I think the, the official ones. There were long-range projections. But then, uh, more recently, there were some official ones that I think Deadline put out. The long-range projections that came out first were from this website called um, Box Office Pro. But then these new ones came in from Deadline before the movie came out, saying that they predicted the movie would get $30 million in the U.S. in its opening weekend and $40 million in additional from overseas market for a combined $70 million global weekend total. And I also made a video myself where I gave my own projections where I thought that the Suicide Squad could earn, you know, in the high 30s, low 40s, and that's way off, right? Because the Suicide Squad actually earned about $26.6 million in the U.S. and $35 million overseas for a global total of about 72 million worldwide, combining, you know, domestic and overseas. So this is a somewhat disappointing performance, but um, I don't know. I still feel like the movie was pretty good and I feel like James Gunn and everyone did, you know, the best that they could under the circumstances. You know, like if the movie had been terrible and gotten horrible reviews, I would say this was a disaster, but um, I think it was a pretty satisfying movie and so did a lot of other people who saw it. Not everyone, but um, I think a lot of people, most people who saw Suicide Squad enjoyed it. Certainly most of the critics. So um, I think this is something that at least quality wise, Warner Brothers can be happy about. Although I'm sure they were hoping for more money at the box office. But again, there were reasons, you know, about four reasons why the Suicide Squad underperformed at the box office. You know, number one is, you know, duh, we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? Um, and that's messing stuff up a lot. Even more so now than I think people thought that we would see it even like two or three weeks ago because the Delta variant is surging in like all over the world, especially, you know, here in the US right now. And I think that's scaring a lot of people away from theaters. Um, a lot of people like to point out, you know, how Black Widow and Fast 9 opened really high. Well, higher than the Suicide Squad, but those movies came out when a lot of people thought that we were like out of this, right? And then like right after those movies opened, then all of a sudden, you know, people got scared of the Delta. We heard all this news, you know, the Delta variant's here, it's coming, it's ravaging and all this kind of stuff. And so I think a lot of people are scared. And then number two, the movie is available at the same time on HBO Max on streaming at no additional cost. I think that's definitely a reason why. Um, the Suicide Squad came in below what people thought. Like, if this had been a theaters-only release, I think, you know, its domestic numbers at least would have been a lot higher. But a lot of people in the United States were like, you know, I can just see this movie at home without having to pay anything for it, or pay any more than I already pay for my HBO Max subscription. So, yeah, I'll bet that that definitely hurt things, especially, you know, when a lot of these same people were afraid to go to a theater. It's like, I can have the same experience at home. And then I think, you know, the R rating probably kept some people out of the theater who would have seen this if this was a PG-13 movie. However, as has been pointed out, The Suicide Squad has been more successful in its opening weekend than other R-rated movies that have come out this year. It debuted higher than Conjuring 3, Mortal Kombat, and Demon Slayer. So, you know, looking at things relatively, um, The Suicide Squad was doing pretty well for an R-rated flick. Although, because it's a comic book movie that's part of a big, bigger brand than Mortal Kombat, Conjuring 3, and Demon Slayer, a lot of people would have expected it to open higher than 26 million, especially since other R-rated movies, superhero movies that DC's done, and not just DC too, um, like Joker and Deadpool, right? Did a lot better, but both those movies came out when we were not in the middle of a pandemic. So, you know, there's that factor. There are some people who just don't really want to see an R-rated movie. I mean, that's why PG and PG-13 movies usually get bigger box office because they are, I guess, seen as safer and more friendly for those who don't like to see people getting blown to bits, <laughs> don't like to see all this blood on screen. And then number four, Suicide Squad is a follow-up to the first Suicide Squad in 2016, and that was a movie a lot of people didn't really like that much. Um, I don't really know if the hype for the Suicide Squad was really there before it came out, the buzz, because a lot of people were still sour from the theatrical version that they saw of part one. You know, they thought that that movie wasn't very good narratively, and so they weren't really too jazzed to see more of that. Even though this movie had a different director and got great reviews, I don't think um, a lot of people were really as excited to see it. Well, as many people were excited to see it 
as you know, we would have seen if the first Suicide Squad had been like this well-reviewed, awesome movie that a lot of people thought was quality, right? A lot of people thought the first Suicide Squad was a mess. And I think that kind of was a buzz kill, a momentum killer for this Suicide Squad. Um, so I think those four reasons are probably why, you know, the Suicide Squad had a muted box office debut. But again, you know, it's a streaming play too. So hopefully it got good numbers on HBO Max and helped boost it those subscriptions. I'm sure it did a little bit. And we're seeing online, you know, a lot of people coming out to defend the Suicide Squad, including other directors and people in the industry, which is a good sign, right? I mean, they're coming out to defend and stick up for a DC movie, something you didn't really see too much of in the past. Um, I think though they're not so much sticking up for DC, they're sticking up for James Gunn, because James Gunn is liked by a lot of people in the industry and a lot of critics. Um, I consider critics to kind of be on the outskirts of the industry. I mean, they're part of it, but they don't like make movies, right? I consider people in the industry, you know, the writers, directors, producers, crew people, people who actually make movies and shows. Journalists, I don't know, that's just my opinion. I don't think journalists are like industry professionals per se, because they don't make any of this. But, you know, they do report on it, and they have influence. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I think that um, the Suicide Squad, the fact that all these people are trying to protect it and be nice to it, is a factor. And I don't even really feel that bad. I mean, I saw the movie, I thought it was good, they did the best that they could. Um, so, you know, I don't really have a doom and gloom feeling about this one. But what do you think? Do you feel that this is a disaster, or... Do you think this is a win given the situation that we're in or not? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like it on YouTube and subscribe to the channel because I appreciate your viewership and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.